Today we're soundproofing this bedroom. We're in a three bed semi-detached house and our homeowners here are suffering from noise from neighbors. They're being woken up in the middle of the night by a baby crying. Now it's slightly different on this project because there's already a soundproofing wall system done by a builder on this separating party wall. Now it's done quite well. The homeowners have said it gives about a 50% human perceived reduction in noise, but they're getting woken up by that baby crying. So we've been brought in to have a look to see what we find. Now there is built-in wardrobes on this flanking wall and the homeowners have installed built-in wardrobes thinking that the clothes in the built-in wardrobes offers some sound attenuation. But on closer inspection, there is actually dot and dab plasterboard installed to this flanking wall. So we're gonna remove that dot and dab plasterboard because it makes noise worse, and we're gonna show you what we're gonna install instead of dot and dab plasterboard on this flanking wall. And we also know that baby crying is a high frequency noise, and that high frequency struggles to come through bricks and mortar. So we're gonna be looking for that hole in the structure. Now we know when the builder did this soundproofing to the separating party wall, they didn't do anything in the loft above. So let's go up in the loft to see what we can find. So we've come up in the loft and we found that hole going through to next door, that hole in the structure. And this is why the baby crying is waking them up in the middle of the night. That high frequency noise is coming through that hole in the structure and then transmitting through the ceiling down into that bedroom down below. We need to brick that hole up with sand and cement before we do any soundproofing. So here we have a hole going through to next door, just as expected, and that would explain that high frequency noise coming through. You've got noise from the neighbors coming through this, this hole, which I can get my arm through definitely get my arm through there. Noise will be coming through there and then going down through this ceiling into that bedroom down below where we were. Now this loft insulation, you would think, but it doesn't offer any sound attenuation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install some rock wall back from the conflicting party wall. Before, we're gonna brick that hole up, of course, brick that hole up with sand and cement. Look at that type of brickwork there. If you have an old semi-detached property and you have that particular type of brickwork on your gable wall, just note that that is quite a lightweight brick and noise will transmit so easily through that. You can't just put a stud frame with rock wall installed to it. You have to sound dampen that wall like I show you in the other videos, either with a viscoelastic membrane or a 20 mil rubber, which is what we're gonna use today. You need to sound dampen that, that brickwork wall because the noise transmits so easily through that. Now what we have told by the homeowners in this property is the neighbours next door are considering a loft conversion and if they have a loft conversion through the other side of this separating wall here in the loft then the noise from that loft conversion will come through and it will transmit straight down into that bedroom down below which is another reason why we're going to future proof this loft here we're going to sound dampen that wall with 20 mil rubber and we're going to put some rock wall over it as well to reduce that noise transmitting down into that bedroom down below so we've removed the dot and dab plasterboard from this flanking wall which had the built-in wardrobes on and as we were removing the dot and dab plasterboard it became apparent that the builder had actually used a 15 mil acoustic grade plasterboard he had dot and dab that to this flanking wall now maybe he thought that this extra mass of the acoustic grade plasterboard would offer some a sound attenuation. But actually what's happened it is caused the sound to resonate more. The hollow voids created by the dot and dab plasterboard technique create a drum effect and also the hollow voids allow the sound to ch be channeled around the property. So the hollow voids created by this dot and dab plasterboard on this flanking wall channeled the noise downstairs and in the loft and into other rooms. Now there are many alternatives to using dot and dab plasterboard technique, all more expensive of course, otherwise they would be common practice. Now one solution would be to use a wet plaster such as a thistle backing plaster or a thistle hard wall. Uh, another alternative would be using Batten's insulation with a 15mm acoustic grade plasterboard. Now what we like to do is sound dampen the wall with a 20 mil rubber or sometimes we like to use a viscoelastic membrane, always tucking the system down beneath the floor and up above the ceiling like this and I'll show you the next layer later on in the video. 
Right, back up in the loft to brick up those holes in the structure, but just wait until you see what we found when we were bricking up those holes. Always try to use sand and cement when bricking up holes in the structure, not expanding foam. Expanding foam works really well for high frequency noise, but not for normal neighbor noise. You're unlikely to get a noticeable reduction noise when using expanding foam, even the acoustic version. So we bricked up that hole, and then got a great big hole. Uh oh, and then we look up here at the purlin. Wow, that go through to next door. Higher. Wow, we okay, come back. So that's a great big hole through to next door. Wow. Now the homeowners didn't even realize they had these great big holes around the purlin. So that's four holes going through to next door in total, which we found in the loft. And we're gonna brick those holes up, not only because they let noise in through the neighbors, but they also uh, are a fire risk as well. It's actually quite common to find holes like this around purlins and also if you have joists going into the separating party wall, it's another common area where you'll find holes going through to next door. Just think how old is your property and how long have people been walking up and down on those floorboards which creating movement. That movement over time is going to dislodge bricks and mortar. Hi Nicholas. Hi. How are we doing? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, just having a sip up my uh, little princess cup. <laughs> but no, I've just been installing the TPS30 onto a, a flanking wall. I stopped by to see how the guys are getting on and they've installed a 15mm sound block board to this 20mm rubber. So that's the second layer of what we installed to this flanking wall system uh, that we've installed to this wardrobe wall. We show you exactly how we do that in the noise free DIY soundproofing course which you can find a link to in the description down below. We've installed the next layer to the loft and here you can see is a 20 mil rubber again. We've installed that to the gable wall to reduce that noise transmitting through the lightweight brickwork down through the brickwork into that bedroom down below. Over the top of this rubber, we've installed four inches, that's 100 mil of A1 non-combusting rock wall, which has been installed to all of this area where we've installed the rubber. This flanking wardrobe wall will have floor to ceiling built in wardrobes. So we're not gonna plaster this wall, we're just going to paint and decorate it and then reinstall the built in wardrobes. So what is that all important soundproofing result? Well, it's been five days and the homeowners claim that they haven't heard the baby cry once, they haven't been woken up in the night, and they also don't hear their own TV uh, from the kitchen down below. So TV noise, room to room transfer and noise is quite a big problem for a lot of homeowners. And since doing this flanking wall, the TV in the kitchen down below this room is no longer audible in this room above, which is great. Uh, now someone can go to bed early whilst another person watches the TV in the room uh, below this bedroom. So it's, that's great, uh, but we need to give it more time. Normally we give our, our soundproofing installations about four weeks before we evaluate the project with the homeowner. So yeah, we need to give it more time, but so far, great result. This case study is just another example of where soundproofing is never as straightforward as just installing a soundproof wall system to that separated neighbor's wall. You've got to consider all those other noise paths in order to get that reduction in noise. A test that you can do right now at home is to put your finger in one ear and put your ear on those flanking walls. Put your ear on that window wall, both sides, the area close to the party wall and the other side of the window wall, but also test maybe that separating wall between your front and back bedroom. That's a test that you can do right now or when your neighbors are making noise, maybe playing music or have a gathering of people next time. Do that test yourself and just gauge what you're hearing on those flanking walls. If you're hearing high frequency noise coming through like these homeowners were, maybe you're hearing kids screeching or a TV presenter's voice on the neighbor's TV coming through the separating party wall. Or you know when your neighbor is on the FaceTime or they're on a Zoom call and you can actually hear the person they're on the phone to through the separating party wall. All those things would signal hole in the structure because that's high frequency coming through. So that's why you want to check the loft for 
holes in the structure and if you have a if you're feeling a bit more ambitious and you know that your joists are running into the separating party wall so if your bedroom floor joists are running into the separating party wall and you're feeling a bit more ambitious maybe pull up the floorboards and check for holes around those joists running into that separating party wall if you have a suspended floor void on the ground floor that's another key area where we find holes in the structure going through to next door if you do find holes in the structure and you're not on the noise-free DIY soundproofing course, please get expert advice first. You can't just go bricking up holes in the structure because some holes are there for ventilation purposes. And if you brick up the wrong hole, you could cause severe damage to your property for, for damp and condensation reasons. So always check with an expert first uh, before you go bricking up any hole. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.